What's up, Sag? Welcome to your November 2020 Creativity Tarot Reading. My name is Kaylee Jean, and welcome to my channel. I record these readings for artists, entrepreneurs, and anyone who's working on their personal growth, self-expression, or spirituality in any form. So if those areas of life are important for you, I encourage you to go ahead and keep listening. Also, if you're just interested in entrepreneurship or you're a maker and you're making things happen for yourself, um, definitely stay tuned. So I want to talk about the meditation that I was doing just now. So I'm just kind of coming back to that because it was very deep and it was unusually, um, it felt unusual for Sagis. <laughs> a lot of times your meditations are um, energizing and sort of, <clears throat> broadening and very sort of astral like very visual and I did get a, a vision um, somewhat of a vision but I also was just getting a feeling as well for you guys so one of the clearest aspects of this and this is going to be really really weird to some of you but I was seeing a, a three-headed dog <laughs> so that's obviously a reference to the Greek myths about um, Hades and the underworld realm and you know the three-headed dog was the guard of the underworld realm so this does make me feel like on some level some of you are going to um, there you're like visiting deeper places or maybe even psychic you know and places within your psyche and possibly also I mean, it's a very, it's the time of year as well. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going into, you know, the darkest portion of the year. So this really fits with the energy of Samhain, um, this energy of looking within. It's kind of darker, it's quieter. It's about releasing things and honoring as well our ancestors and those who've passed on. So that could definitely be something that you're doing right now, something that's important for you or on your mind, um, in some way, shape or form, tapping into that. Um, but I also feel like this is kind of about having a, a more accurate and clear sense of your past, present and future. Um, so some of you could be really having a new, like developing a new site, I wanna say, of your life or like seeing things in a different way. And this is happening on a very inner level. Like I said, it feels very psychic to me. It feels very intuitive and actually very creative. Um, yeah, very creative. But at the same time, it's it's like you're going to the under realm <laughs> within yourself um, and, you know, rising up or kind of like emerging from that again with greater awareness so, or maybe, maybe you just have a Scorpio person that you're really close with or that you're going deep with because this is all very Scorpionic imagery, right? Um, or you could be a Sag with, you know, a Scorpio Venus or Mercury or Moon or something like that as well. And then, you know, that would just be highlighting those aspects of yourself. But it's a very Scorpionic energy coming through um, that has a lot to do with redefining elements of your life, maybe redefining challenges that you've been through. And kind of, I also just saw someone, this is really vivid just now, I just saw someone stepping over, like they came up to a little stream that was running through um, like a darker landscape. And then they like stepped over, like one foot over the little stream and then the next foot. Um, so that to me is a very, very clear psychic symbol of crossing over like a border or a boundary. Um, so some of you are actually saying goodbye to something that you've been stuck with in the past or something um, something that you have felt created a parameter around you or a border around you. You're kind of stepping over that border and you're able to look back on it and you're like, whoa, you know, like that's the terrain that I was in for however long, maybe it was a job and you're leaving that job or maybe it was um, a pattern of thought, a pattern of behavior, even a relationship. You know, it's like you're, once you're on the other side and you've crossed over the boundary, you can actually see that chapter of your life for what it really was. 
And that's the message is you're getting perspective. Because now that you're experiencing something different, something new, you didn't have anything to compare the old way with because that was what you were in. You were a fish in water, right? You were like submerged in it. So you didn't know what you were submerged in. But now that you're out of it, you've crossed the river, right? You can look back and you're like, oh, wow, I, I, that looks different to me now than what it looked like when I was in it. So very, very ephemeral message. I hope this is helpful for at least one of you out there. <laughs> Let's take a look at your tarot cards. Sagittarius. And I'm also going to draw your Animal Spirit Oracle cards. Okay, and we're going to get your Bob Ross message as well for Sag. And your Sacred Destiny Oracle landscape card. There we go, Saggy. Okay, so let's take a look here. We've got Swan as your path and the Golden Egg as the influence or challenge. Fascinating. And I want to look at your landscape. Oh, it's flow. Oh, that really matches the Swan. I love it, that glassy water and that sense of um, being able to move peacefully, you know? I think this is a really gorgeous reading already. So one thing that I will say is that the path that you're on right now, Sag, you are on the right track, <laughs> clearly. Um, and I feel like you have every reason to just respond naturally and calmly to everything that comes up, you know, over the next month of November. I feel like you really have, um, you've got it together. <laughs> you have poise. Poise is the word that I have for you, Saj. You're poised. Um, and the, the main piece of advice that I get from this is stay true. Stay true. Because there could be moments in the month where you feel like your loyalty is being tested or like your um, honesty is being tested. Um, you might also feel like there's little moments where a, a, an, an old familiar pattern of insecurity could come up. And when it does, it's not about berating yourself or saying, oh, that's bad. It's more like, oh, just calmly remember that that's not the landscape that you're moving through anymore, right? Like you're in the flow. <laughs> you're going with the flow of life and, and you're flowing in the right direction. So you don't have to get like rattled at all. <laughs> I feel like there could be things that could rattle you that would have rattled you in the past that this month you're like, I don't need to go there. I don't need to go there. I'm absolutely loving where I'm going right now. So I don't need to redirect and try and fix something or convince someone of something or prove myself or worry. Like that's not what I have to do. I have to just keep going in my lane. So stay true, stay honest to yourself and others when you do feel those little moments of insecurity come up. It's safe for you to be totally honest right now. That's what I feel. Ten of Coins and the Emperor. We've got the Warrior of Swords and Temperance. That's your card. It's so beautiful. The Fool, Seven of Cups, and the Three of Pentacles. Okay. And the Queen of Wands. So this is actually really interesting because you got your two cards. For me, the Queen of Wands is Sagittarius, and the, the Temperance card is ruled by Sagittarius. So um, these are both your cards, and I love that you got them. 
So one of the things that I see is like in the beginning of November, you've got this sense of achievement or of things that are strong in your life. It could be a person with the emperor. It could be um, a father figure, mentor, or a man in your life. Or this could be representing an aspect of you if you're an entrepreneur or if you're a boss or a manager or if you run your own business, for example. Um, and even just if none of those things precisely apply, but it's like how you control yourself in your life, really. And you see that things are starting to pay off. Decisions, commitments, and responsibilities that you've been taking care of are paying off for you with the Ten of Pentacles and the Emperor. So it's good things are happening when it comes to finances in the first week of the month. I see your initiative that you're taking being rewarded. So if there is something that you're thinking about taking initiative on, definitely go for it in the first week of November. I think that it's gonna be very promising for you and there's a payout. So maybe you're getting a check or maybe you are realizing you had some more money than you thought or um, you're buying something and reselling it and making money on the transaction. Something along those lines, but it's paying off and it's your persistence, discipline, and commitment that are paying off here. So definitely looks good, or for some of you, you could be being offered a raise from a superior. But overall, it's just good energy around finances and your efforts are paying off in the first week of November. And keep in mind that could come in a little later, a little sooner, depending on your specific place in the collective. Now, the second week, of November, we've got Temperance and the Warrior of Swords. So one thing that I will say with this is I feel like this is where that earlier message that was coming through on your Animal Spirit Oracle cards about not needing to get caught up in correcting something or in, um, like, I don't know why I want to say this because you're not, you're really not the most defensive sign right? Sagittarius is not known for being hyper defensive. Um, you tend to be more of a magnanimous sign, if anything. And of course, everybody has a unique chart, but you tend to be a sign that is liberal in the sense that you accept many different perspectives. You can see why other people may differ in opinion from you. And it typically doesn't make you have to, you know, get stronger in your position and, and argue someone else into submission just because they think differently than you. A truly liberal person accepts that other people have, you know, their own reasons for thinking the way that they do, right? Or being the way that they are. Um, and I feel like that's really true for you, but in some ways, in some areas of your life, Saj, there are those sensitive points. There are those vulnerabilities or those frustrations or those pain points that if you were to get criticized on them or if you were to feel um, attacked in some way about it, I feel like you would you know, you would want to defend yourself. That would be your first instinct. Um, but I think that if you refrain from that and you kind of, again, take that temperance approach, which we were just, you know, I was just talking about that. Um, if you take the flowing, you know, trusting everything in its due time, you know, you don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to set the record straight. You don't have to, you know, control the narrative. Like this is about live and let live. It's about you do you and I'll do me. And even if I find out that you're talking crap about me behind my back or you are um, being, you know, someone is kind of differing from you in a more of a disrespectful way, it doesn't mean that you're going to immediately jump out of your seat and try and control the narrative or control or influence the situation. This implies a radical, and I mean radical, sense of trust in the universe and in yourself that you don't need to defend yourself, that you don't feel the pressure to um, set the record straight or to be, you know, all involved in things. Like sometimes that is what you need to do, right? Sometimes we do have to defend ourselves. Um, but I think in this particular situation with the 
Warrior of Swords and Temperance, I almost feel like these are like, the Temperance is kind of tempering the Warrior of Swords. You have a good argument, maybe. I think you do. You have a good argument for whatever it is you're thinking about in the second week of November. But I think ultimately you know that engaging is not going to prove to be that fruitful anyway. So it's more like Temperance is kind of like, yeah, I could argue with that person and try and explain to them my real reasoning or what my side of the story is, but I'd kind of rather just break out my watercolor paints and just paint for like an hour, you know? It's like I'd rather just have fun and it's a beautiful day. I'd rather go for a walk with a friend or my dog or something than you know, get into an argument with someone online <laughs> or um, call up a family member who's like being difficult, you know, because truthfully, I think a lot of times what happens, particularly with you, Sag, is if somebody just tries to instigate something with you and they're talking to other people around you or and they're talking to other people around you about you when you're not there. And I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I do this scenario is coming up, so I have to say it. Um, if you just don't say anything at all and you're just continuing to be in your lane and enjoying your life, honestly, like the, the people who are on the receiving end of the individual who's talking about you and who's like voicing all their frustrations about you, the people who are the sounding boards on that are actually going to naturally be drawn to supporting you because you're not the person, you know, in there arguing with them and unloading on them all of their like frustrations, right? Like you're the person that's actually enjoyable to be around and work with. <laughs> you're the person that is a live and let live person genuinely. So I think you need to remember that if there is somebody who's stirring the pot, if you've got a pot stir in your life this month, they're really not gonna be able to affect you for very long. So um, that's kind of what I see here as well, like moving forward is like, I see you focusing more on your own imagination, your own creative um, inspirations, the things that you want for yourself. And the Fool card is showing up here with the Seven of Cups. So one thing that I will say about this in the third week of November is you are probably going to feel very, very imaginative and visionary, but you want to write things down. Because I think it's easy when you have the Seven of Cups and the Fool, it would be too easy for you to kind of wallow in a sense of like no, not having enough um, clarity or boundaries or specificity in terms of what you're doing. So if you're a business owner, you could have some really great ideas for how to solve some problems or how to improve the state of your business in the third week of November. But if you don't write things down or create some kind of list of things that you need to take action on in order to make that happen, all of that awesome inspiration is just gonna get wasted. Because that's the danger with these cards is too little structure. So you wanna allow yourself to have some dream time, right? Allow yourself to come up with some new solutions, brainstorm, be creative, but also you need to marry yourself to reality and commit to a plan of action by the end of that week, okay? I just, I'm saying this because I feel like it will be too important for you to um, just miss out on that, you know? Like, and that's what I feel would come back to bite you, you know, is like the dogs biting the fool. I think that the thing that would come back to bite you is that you were given these awesome, you know, inspirational insights by your higher self, but you didn't take action on them. So spirit's kind of like, all right, well, if I'm not, if you're not going to take any action, why would I keep showing up and trying to help you? Right. Um, and it's not saying that spirit would ever not help you or permanently like abandon us as creators. But I think it's very true that when we have inspiration and we have these powerful insights and we have these beautiful ideas, um, let's say, for example, for a book that you want to write, you have this amazing story idea, but you don't ever take action on it. That idea will float over into someone else's mind. <laughs> um, so they will, because they will actually write it down. 
Um, so I, I believe personally that ideas have a certain, they have like a certain life force of their own. Um, that's my personal belief. Not everybody obviously is going to see the world that way, but I believe that if we get an inspiration and it really works for us and it really lights us up, we should take it seriously because if we don't, it's going to go somewhere else and we might have missed on an opportunity. So um, that's what I feel is it's important to have structure and to come up with a plan and commit to that plan in the third week. In the fourth week, you've got three of pentacles and queen of wands. So you really are sailing through the end of November. Working um, on co-creative projects could become a focus for you, um, for many of you at the end of the month. But overall, this is a very successful energy. You are radiant, you are succeeding, you are being very efficient as well. And overall, I just see you working hard, yes, but also being paid handsomely for that work. And also just, you know, publishing would be great. Publishing things because the sun will be in your sign at that time. And so there could be some really good opportunities when it comes to, you know, shining and expressing your gifts, sharing something, launching a product, for example, or a course if you're a teacher, or starting a website if you're an online entrepreneur. Something like that is working out really, really well. So the end of November is a really great time for you to think about putting some things out there. <laughs> Okay, um, so with your Bob Ross message, we have you can move mountains, rivers, trees, you can determine what your world is like. So beautiful. I love that. So you have the ability, Sag, it's really up to you. And I think that this is really true when you get the Emperor and the Queen of Wands in one reading. It's like you just have the ability to move mountains. You have the ability to create the landscape that you want to live in for yourself, you know. And it is partly it is about just going with the flow of the energy that you're already in. Because like I said before, and hopefully this is just reaffirming for you guys who are listening, that you are on the right track. So... Keeping that in mind, recognize that as you move forward, you don't have to do a lot of major restructuring right now. This isn't really the time for you to shake things up entirely unless that was already the thing that you were on track to do or the thing that was already in your heart. You know, um, But overall, I feel like this is a really affirming reading for those of you who are like, this is what I'm doing, but it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> you know? um, you're on the right track. So... I hope this reading was a blessing for you. Please let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or questions. I'm sending you guys tons of love and light. If you enjoyed this reading, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and subscribe to notifications so you'll never miss another reading. And I will talk to you next month. Bye.